Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Digital Today's podcast. I am Dave. I'm Ron. And boy, it is windy out here, Ron. Yeah, we did it. We got, was it Monday morning? Monday morning. It sounded like Halloween out there. The wind was howling through just before this big old nor'easter rolled through, and the way the sky was lit, it's like, yep, it's we're, we're right out of Rip Van Winkle up here. But we didn't get anywhere near the wind and the wind that you got down there. Yeah, this was worse than that hurricane that we got a couple weeks ago. The wind was really bad. I looked out the window late last night, and some lady went by in a bicycle. It was that windy, you know what I mean? Yeah, I you didn't realize you, that Margaret Mitchell. Lived in your <laughs> yeah, and now uh, the power went out. I, I I was streaming last night, and I streamed a game of second and ten. I'll talk about what we're playing. Yep. And uh, the I got done, and I went to bed, and I plugged in my phone to charge it because it was getting low, and the power went out. I'm like, oh, that's great. I got hardly any battery left in my phone, and the power goes out, and I had just enough battery to check the outage and where it was. And it was uh, my street only. And there were 13 people out, according to this thing. I'm like, oh, yeah, they're going to really rush to put 13 people that's, back on. That's right. Yeah, you know, there's other parts of the town that 500 people were missing power. But they were good. It only took them a little over an hour, and they got it back up and running, which is good. And then in the middle of the night, we heard this big thud, and we knew exactly what that was. That was a tree. It didn't hit the house, though, which was good. I was I, I saw the pictures. You must be so glad it didn't hit the house. Yeah, it was way down the back, but it did. It did break one of the, the fence panels, and then the the back gate, it fell on the back. I couldn't open the back gate because it, like, it fell, and all the top branches were, like wedged in between the pickets. <laughs> so I'm out there in the rain with an electric chainsaw with extension cords going you know all over the ground trying to cut this thing up and save the fence and open the back gate, and I did. And all these trees uh, in the woods that were kind of near my neighbor's house just fell right on my fence. It just was like, wow. So I'm back there cutting them all up. And uh, yeah, it was a fun morning, an hour in the rain with an electric chainsaw, just trying to <laughs> trying to cut these things off, you know, off my fence. You still got coyotes? Yeah. Well, that was the concern was when I looked out and yeah. I saw the tree crush the fence. I was like, well, I don't want any coyotes in the yard and I don't want the dog getting out. So I, when I ran down the back, I was like, oh, well, I think I can save the fence. So I, you know, I managed to cut the, the branch that was hitting the fence off. And then pushed the fence back into place. It still had some broken pickets, but uh, for the most part, it was fine. But yeah, all over the all over the woods behind our house, the trees were down. My neighbor had a fence that was completely blown away, and he's got dogs. I think he's even got chickens in his yard. And it's like, well, <laughs> you ain't gonna be letting those guys out because you know you can see right into the yard. You know, the fence was gone. It was it was something else. So um, there's still people without power here in the town. So hopefully we'll get through through the show without losing power today. That, that would be that would be beneficial. Yeah, it rained pretty hard yesterday morning, but by the time that um about about noontime and it stopped. In fact, when my wife went to work yesterday, the sun had popped out here. Hmm. Yeah, we it's haven't not had any a sun. warm day, but we're yeah. out of warm days. Yeah. It's all it's Halloween this week. Wait, so. Actually, the, the other day the, it was raining here, but it was warm, so it was kind of a comfortable rain, if that makes sense. Because it was yeah, still, it, makes a lot of sense. it was in the sixties. I was like, okay, I'm not cold at all. I had shorts on the whole bit. So anyway, so um, this is the cardstock, 110 pound cardstock episode. Yeah, yeah, you mentioned that 110 uh, pound cardstock. So digital dice episode 110. Uh, today we're going to talk about making it make sense. And it's kind of piggybacking off, I think it was episode 43 that we talked about how you learn the game. And so we're going to talk a little bit about, uh, you know, know, having people that really break down the instructions for you and make it make sense to the average person. Because sometimes we talked about having good instructions in games. And if you're the game developer, sometimes it's really hard to put the instructions out because you know the game so absolutely, well, absolutely, you know, and so it's hard to to write instructions for somebody that has no clue about your game. And somebody will come along and do that. And I know you've done that. And I've done that. And a few other people have done that. Uh, and you had a pretty good story that we'll talk about with that. So, yes, yeah, so we're going to talk about making the game make sense. That's going to be our topic today. Um Ways to get a hold of us, digitaltodice.com is our website, 978-751-DICE, 978-751-3423 is our text line. I've been chatting with a couple of people uh, over the text line there, just kind of uh, game talk and stuff like that. So it's been kind of fun chatting with uh, some of the people out in the audience. And um, mm-hmm. it's, it's nothing we need to read on the show, uh, but it was just, you know, asking about games and what do you think about this game and, you know, uh, you know whatever. Uh, digitaltodice at yahoo.com is our email if you'd like to send us an email about anything at all. And over on Facebook, Facebook. 
facebook.com slash groups slash digital to dice, the ever growing Facebook group over there. So um, before we get to what we're playing, uh, another quick funny story here is my iPhone was really dying, and I got an older, original iPhone SE. Eight it was years called. old, you said. It's I either six or eight years old. I thought it was six years old, but it might be eight years old. Because when I asked the guy, he says, well, these come out and then. I don't think it's eight years, but it could be. Time Time flies, you know, when you get older. And so it was not holding the charge, and I'd already replaced the battery once, and something was just chomping the battery because I was at the rink doing that junior hockey game, and in between periods, I'll, I'll get on Facebook or I'll, you know, text somebody, and I pull out my phone, it's like 78, 76, you know, 75, 74. 70. It's like going down before my eyes. So I'm like, okay, something's chomping its battery out. No matter what I did, I couldn't couldn't really fix it. So I was like, let me get a new phone. So I went into the, the cell phone store up here, and the guy says, oh, good thing you come in because in November they're discontinuing these phones from the network. <laughs> I didn't know they could do that. But they said they they're, tr- they're trying to push everybody out of the 3G because my phone's so old. It's a 3G phone, and they want to push everybody over to the 5G. So they said the you good need, You need the additional bandwidth for the 5G <laughs> because it pretty much is cable modem speeds. Yeah, so they said the good news is because your phone is becoming obsolete, they have a great deal on the new one. So I upgraded to the iPhone 13 or something like that. I don't know. I said, what do you, what do you got? And it says, if you get the new one, we can basically, you know, give it to you for half price. The older yeah, you, ones. You got a sweetheart of a deal. I did get a sweetheart of a deal. I got that. And it says, and if you activate another line, uh, then you even get a better deal on a better plan. So they... Gave me an iPad with a cellular plan, and he says, you get the new phone, the new iPad with cellular service, and your bill's going to go down. <laughs> I can't believe you gave your dog a phone. What's he going to yeah, do? Yeah, right? Yeah, CJ's going to have a have, you know, play some games. Maybe he'll play some gyms or something. So I was like, I says, I, I didn't believe he him. He beats me. I was, like, how, beats me. I was like, how do I get a new phone and a new iPad, and you're going to wrap all those costs up, and I'm going to be paying less per month? And he says, yeah, he says, all the deals that you're going to get. And get on a new plan. So I was like, okay. So, Would you get a hold of Comcast to see what we can do about deals for them? Yeah, I know, right? So <laughs> so I have a new phone. It's kind of neat. It's got 5G. I actually, I, I was actually FaceTiming you. We, we were talking the other day. I was in the mall. Yes. I was in yeah, the mall. And we, we had the, the video chat going. And it was pretty good. Yes, it was. <laughs> so I was like, okay. So I'm digging the new phone now. So I'll be able to watch the hockey games now and be a little bit clearer and and a little bit bigger than my other phone, but it's a funny story. How ch- check your phone because if it's really old, it might not work. Yeah, I got the password information for five G for for mine. I got mine a few months ago, but I just haven't. I just use it for a phone. I have mm. I have a computer that's hardwired. So I, a, anyway, I got a story. I read this morning. This has nothing to do with cell phones. Um, banner raising ceremonies. You know how most teams do it. After they win a championship, well, well, last night. Well, the Indianapolis uh, Colts they, they raise banners every time they they win. That, that's true. South that's East true. Division second place. <laughs> what the, 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 they used to make fun of the Colts for raising all these stupid banners. Winner of the baking baking contest, uh, chili eating contest of nineteen sixty. Best best recipe in the NFL book. That's right. <laughs> So the Montreal Canadiens, the woeful Montreal oh, Canadiens. Yeah. Oh, they're terrible. They're absolutely terrible. They lost to so Seattle. Did, yeah, well, that's not the best part of the story. <sighs> yes, it is. A ter- it's, I don't want to talk about that. I watched the highlights <laughs> when we did this. It was 5-1. to one. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> Their goalie is not good. The, so, well, did, did they get well, the goalie it from... It if you can't score. Did they get the I goalie mean, from Philadelphia, Toronto? Because he looked like he should be playing in Philadelphia, Toronto. He was that bad. How bad do you think the Red Wings are? We beat them 6-1. Oh, jeepers, yeah. That's your only win, that right? Only win, the only time they've won this year. Oh, they man. scored six. Anyway, long story longer. Um... Speaking of banner raising, Seattle got the chance to finally raise a banner. It had nothing to do with the Kraken. They raised the 1917 Stanley Cup banner because whatever they were called back then beat the Canadiens to win the Stanley Cup. because It, it was, was the, the Metropolitans. The Metropolitans beat the, uh, uh, they, the Western 
Hockey League beat the National Hockey League. And so the poor Seattle Metropolitans finally got a chance to raise yeah. their banner. I thought that was a pretty cool story. It was interesting. That, that's always been a trivia question is which is the first American team to win the Stanley Cup? And everybody thought it would be Bruins or Red Wings. No, it was the Seattle Metropolitans. Yep. And so they finally got the chance to to raise the banner a hundred and four years later. I heard that they retired number thirty two because they were the thirty second team in the league. Second team. It's um I that the number <sighs> twelve is retired for the Seahawks because the crowd is so loud it's the twelfth man. So open opening day they retire thirty two because they're the thirty second team. Okay, welcome but to just, welcome to the Indianapolis just, Coats of the NHL. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe OJ Simpson will want to play hockey and you don't want to give him his number. It's oh, 32. Yeah. Yeah. All right. What are you playing? All right. So let's get to what we're playing here. Uh, well, I've been playing a lot of football. That's what I've been doing. Yeah. Uh, I'm enjoying my football mogul 22. I've been playing uh, the Houston Oilers 1992 season, just kind of ripping through that. Uh, that. That game plays really fast. I talked about yes, that. If I if you set it up to have instant results on a play and just play offense, you can get through a game in 10 minutes. It's, it's been really, really enjoyable. In fact, uh, Clay just sent out an email. There's an, uh, there's an update for football mogul New 22. So there's a patch for it. For the draft? Oh, yeah, something like that. Yeah, so just a patch out for Football Mogul 22 if you have it. So I've been enjoying that. I did play a game of the 1979 Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'm playing defense for them. That's the year that they went to the uh, the NFC Championship game and lost to the Rams 9 to nothing. I'm going to play the defense because the offense is dreadful. It really is. Doug Williams was 0 for 12. And I finally took him out and put in Mike Ray, I think, as the backup. And they, I think we, we lost the game 7 to 3. And the seven points came on a punt return. So I did my job on defense. I did. I Good held job. them scoreless, Good but it was job. a punt return by Detroit won the game. So that's been fun playing defense in that game. Uh, so football mogul 22, I, I pulled out a second and 10 football. And just playing. I've been playing 1979. I'm kind of playing that along with football mogul 22, that 79 season. But I'm just I'm picking different games with, with uh, second and 10. But I did stream last night before the power went out. I streamed. I thought I was streaming the red right 88 game when Cleveland was picked off in the end zone, Brian Sipe, 1980 or 81. 80, I, yep. I thought I was playing that game, but I just went out and I bought a new Denver Broncos hat with the D with the horse, and I liked, I always liked that logo, so I wanted to play a Broncos game. <laughs> so, so I had the Broncos playing the, the Browns, and I thought it was the red right game, and then people were saying, nope. That's Oakland, <laughs> not, not Denver. So I was like, well, in my alternative replay, Oakland missed an extra point, and Denver went on to play Cleveland. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. <laughs> so you're the Oakland won everything on the road to win the Super Bowl. They won the yeah. wild card game, I forget, against who. They beat Cleveland in the divisional game, and then they went and beat Dan Fouts in San Diego, in yep. San Diego. Yep. So I played that. That was fun. Denver was really moving the ball for the first half. Couldn't do anything in the second half. Cockroft missed a field goal in the dying minutes of the game, went to overtime, and uh, thanks to uh, I had two fumbles at the 20-yard line, and both were recovered by Cleveland, but they were overturned because the, they ruled the guy down. Two plays in a row, outside run and inside run, and I fumbled twice. I said, that's it. I kicked the field goal in overtime and just won it. So that was fun. So I've been playing a lot of football. I actually played a little bit more strat football. That's that's a long game. The going play by play, picking your picking your play on offense, whatever. That's a longer new kind of game. New basketball game is out for that. Yeah, the new basketball game's coming up. But I, I'm thinking about taking a chance on that because the last basketball game died on me. But I am thinking about giving it a chance because I do have some seasons for that. Although I I deactivated them, and I'm hoping I can reactivate them. It's kind of weird how they do it. So I'm thinking about getting the new Strat basketball game to check it out. Uh, so yeah, mostly football. Oh, I did play some hockey. I played uh, strat cards and dice using the the helper. I did do that. Um, I I play like a little bit of advanced, a little bit of super advanced, a little bit of basic. I have a, a mixture of stuff in there that I do for that. I think I I think I screwed up a bunch of stuff in that game when I played, but I had fun with it. It was um, I'm trying to think who I played. Oh, I played Boston, L.A., 1990, and uh, the Bruins were up four to two and end up losing like seven and five or something like that. So the Kings came back and had a lot of goals. That was fun. So I got to play some, cause everyone uh, was playing strat hockey. Yeah. The replay gamers has just learned strat hockey. ID was playing strat hockey. So I was like, oh, I gotta, I'm in the mood for cards and dice strat hockey. So I did that. 
Um, I played a couple of games of, of that. I'll talk about it in a moment. Yeah, and I think that's about <clears throat> all I've done is, is played a lot of PC games, and I played that that strat cards and dice that I that I did stream by the way, uh, using the helper. Uh, and it, yeah, a couple of people asked me about that. If you ordered the strat PC hockey game, I, I mean, at least the last time I bought it. Um, it comes with as of last year's. It was still as of last year's. They clear. they throw the utility in. So when you download the zip file in that, there should be a. It's called H stat H S T A T thirty two, I believe, and that's the hockey utility program. It's a standalone utility. It does not work with the PC game. It's just there yeah, if you want. And that's too bad. Yeah, if you want to play cards and dice, that'll you can play it right on the helper. It has dice rolls. It has all the cards built in. And um, and it'll keep all your stats for you. I use it just to kind of keep the stats for me and uh, flip the cards, and it keeps the time and everything for you. So it does a really nice job of it to, to play cards and dice, and it's a utility. It's a helper is what it is. Uh, but you can't do anything with the PC game with it. But, yeah, so if you're looking for it, check the zip file that you get with Strat for the hockey PC game. And at, at least for me it was in there. A lot of other people, that's where you find that. And so, uh, and if not, it might be out there in the wild somewhere. Because again, it's fr it's kind of free, so um, and so you you know, it's nothing you buy. They just throw it in. I don't know if they're still still. But has, they haven't supported it in. Yeah, years. I don't know if I if, still... if I bought because I got the new hockey game from this year. I don't know if it was in that or not. I don't remember. If I don't it, know because when I buy the new game in a couple of weeks. Yeah, um, let us know it if it's in there because I forget. Well, it puts it in the same folder, so it's the same. It, it all goes in the same folder. You're just upgrading the one game to the oh, other. Oh, I see. So, so it's I, either. I won't know until the next time I upgrade a computer. Okay. Yeah, so we'll see if it's in there or not. But that's where you so, find. That's why I use that. And, uh, yeah, I think that's about it. I still haven't got back to my Capital 74 and Inside the Crease. Haven't done that yet. I want, I want to do that. I still want to pick up Inside Blitz from the Inside Games. I like the Inside Sports Games. They're very... Not a lot of decisions to be made. You sit and you mm -hmm. watch it play out, and I and I enjoy that. I do, as we talked about. I enjoy watching the game play mm -hmm. out. I do like making decisions sometimes, but I also do like sitting back and watching that play out. And uh, I think I played a little bit of Action PC Hockey 2 this week. I think I streamed a game. I'm not sure which, which game I streamed. And uh, I know I streamed Strat PC. Oh, Strat PC Hockey, 1985. I did, did a one-off, Calgary and the Pittsburgh Penguins. First period, Mario Lemieux oh, gets yeah. gets not one fight, but two fights. Mario Lemieux, 1985, in the first period against Calgary, fought twice. He had two five-minute majors in the first period. I thought that was that was crazy, but that's the stuff that can kind of happen when you play those games. Yeah, we talked about that offline after, and uh, a couple years later, he had years where he had close to 100 penalty minutes, mm. but that early in his career... You know, when they're younger, they they might do a little bit more fighting than they would when they're obviously older. Right. Uh, but but again, it's one of those things that you, you know you can't get all upset at because that's a one off. And if I played the whole season, chances are those numbers would iron out by the end they, of the season. They do even out. You know, again, I played a game of, I think it was Appa that I got a this defenseman scored two goals and he had four goals on the season, so we got two of those in one game for me. Now chances are he wouldn't score again that season, so I don't get too worked up about that stuff. Um. So, anyway. Remember remember the, my 75, 76 action PC Islander replay? I think J someone, either Burt Marshall or Jerry Hart, only had two goals. I think it was hmm. Marshall. And he didn't get his first goal until, like, the 75th game. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. It's like, he's not going to score. I, uh, yeah. Score! Are you yeah. kidding me? So but it's that's why we play these games is, is yeah. to see the results that we're going to get compared to real life, you know? And, and if you're trying to get everything exact, then, you know, again, you might as well just go watch the game on YouTube or something if you want it exact. Mm -hmm. But that's why we play these games to, to get the, the different results and see how they go, you know? So, um, but I think that's mostly what I've been playing a lot, which is good because I was in that yes. funk over the summer. But I'm back to playing a lot of different games, streaming some, some games. Um... Yeah, so that's kind of what I've been doing. What have you been playing? <sighs> Pulled out the 75, 76 Islanders. We beat Minnesota. It's weird because there's only 17 skaters. So, and, and Strat, PC, you generally get enough forwards for three lines and six defensemen. So you can run three and three. And you normally get two extra 
forwards as the cat tries to poke me. Um, and so normally you could do, I do a fourth line, move someone from another line and just play my two extra forwards to make sure everyone gets minutes. But Minnesota, that was weird. I don't know if they were rested because the computer determines who plays, and I don't mess around with that. I had an extra extra forward and an extra defenseman. Hmm. And so I pretty much had to, yes, Miss M, I pretty much had to run. A, the extra defenseman only got in once during the game. So that was weird. Um, we, beat, we beat Minnesota. And then I was going to Atlanta. And your hawk luck uh, kind of followed me to uh, the Yandy for tonight's game between the New York Islanders and your Atlanta Flames. And uh, I think I had one shot in the first period, Ooh. maybe two. Atlanta was strong. a tough, gritty team. They were not a bad team. They were never a great team, but Atlanta was always a tough team, even at home, especially at home. Pucks, pucks were stolen. I go to pass and, you know, miss pass. Breakaway chances by Jerry Hart, which weren't going to happen, and and uh, you don't have the new even, you don't have the new version of the no, I will because it, no, it's because I always buy the the card image. It's sixty bucks, and so you got to wait. They have added a few things, way. which I which I do like to that is now when you go to penetrate, it shows you the results of the penetration roll, and it'll say you know one to thirteen of twenty, and then show you the roll. Yeah, so so you know how much you missed the them. penetration by. It's just, again, yeah. it's more cards and dice info, but I, I do like that they added that. So I had two goal chances. I forgot who the goalie was for, for Atlanta. Um, was it, it Bush, probably Bouchard or Mir? Or maybe even Lemelin. Mir. It was Mir. Mir? It was Mir. Uh, in the Minnesota game, it was George Harrison's brother, or played like George Harrison's brother <laughs> because he was gone the first period and just goals all the way down the card. Um, so... I had two chances where uh, it wasn't been a, it wasn't going to be a goalie rating. It was a goal and whatever the number. Now, the number wasn't very high, but it was a number nonetheless. And uh, Mir made the save by one. So let's say it was goal one to seven. Split card was an eight. Hmm. So it's three to one in the third period. Cards counting down. I know I have a chance. Brian Trottier has three chances on a rebound and can't put it home. <laughs> um, we've got a massive case of Tourette's. Uh, Billy Harris scores on the 34th card of the period to make it three to two. There's a chance if I win the faceoff, I can get that goalie out. Nope, I lose that three to two. Just one of those we are those nights, and that's the great thing about Strat hockey you know you have those nights where it's just not going your way mm. and that was one of those we're five, i think five wins behind real pace now we'll make okay that's close that's close it's terrible but um man i wanted at least to get a point in atlanta uh football replay we're halfway home this week had a great game yesterday between the dolphins and the patriots computer said the line would be even Dolphins blew them out. And that's 84, uh, 84 action PC football, right? Action PC football, yep. Um, so Burrito's on pace for 5,000 yards. Eric Dickerson played in my game last week. And uh, next week is a big one next Tuesday. It is the Rams and the 49ers for the first time oh, nice. this year. And the 49ers are 5-2 and because they haven't played the rest of week 8 yet. So they are one game behind where they were in real life and have been a couple baseball games. Someone wanted the first game in Seattle Pilots history. They lost on a walk-off. And today I played uh, Kansas, the Royals and the Yankees. Someone wanted a Yankee game from 76. Didn't show up to watch it, but uh, asked for it. And the Yankees, Sparky Lyle blew the save in the ninth inning. Mm. And so it will have been the Royals that would have been slaughtered by the Cincinnati Reds. Oh, and wow. Not the Yankees instead. So that's what I've been playing yeah. for the most part. Have you ever, when you've been playing, do you ever play a team or a season and then roll into the next season with what you, you know you know what I'm talking about? So you play. I tried you play. to do that once, but I, I tried to go right into 70. When I did the action PC, 75, 76, I under replay. I wanted to do 76, 77. But I had played so much of it uh, that 
I think the hockey game version changed, and so you just get tired. Okay, because I've been thinking it. about that, like whether it's the mogul games or well, you at least know. for the football, it's only sixteen games. <laughs> yeah, hockey or franchise hockey or something like that it is you know. And oh, by the way, franchise hockey manager eight is out as of today or yesterday. So. Okay. So if you listen to the show, Franchise Hockey Manager 8 is out. Now, I got to email Jeff. I want to give him a little bit of time because uh, Jeff and Adam do when, every Wednesday night at 10 o'clock Eastern time. They do Franchise Hockey Manager on Twitter on the OOTP channel over there. Uh, Adam, who's the the community manager, is in the hospital. Yeah, he, po- he posted on Twitter. Now, he didn't say why. But um, they didn't go live. Last, I think Jeff was alone last week, and they missed one day because Adam's in the hospital. I'm, I'm hoping he's okay. Uh, he, I haven't heard why he's in the hospital if he's out yet. But uh, they're they're on tonight, Wednesday night. If you listen to this on Wednesday nights, they do they do on uh, Wednesday nights at ten on Twitter. So I'm hoping he's okay. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna. I was giving Jeff some time to you know to you know get that game out and get it launched before we got him on the show. But we'll have Jeff back yep. on and talk about, because there's a lot of really neat things in franchise hockey manager. Yes. There really is. There's, there's stuff. They're, they're going in the right direction. I'm really happy about that. Um, but, but I thought about, you know, trying a game, playing a team through the season. And then at the end of the season, starting the new season and trying to improve that team. And that's what a lot of people I, like to do with the, with the franchise with mode. O O T P. Sure. I've done that. So I'd like to see what I can do, especially in commissioner mode where the season ends and maybe I I draft a good guy or I force a trade. And, you know, I always thought about, you know, can I take a bad team or a mediocre team and then, you know, let's get them a good, you know, player, you know, maybe cheat illegally do it, you know, from a force a trade from another team or something or pick somebody up on waivers to try to improve the team. Because that's one thing I really haven't done you know, I do a lot of the one-offs and just playoffs, but I haven't really taken a team, guided them through a season. You know, you don't have to play every game, but you know, you know what I mean. You play or you play games, sim games, and at the end of the season, okay, let's see if I can make the team better. I, I think yes. that's what's one thing that's on my list to do as far as playing these simulation games is to try to start a new season up after playing a season. And what can I do? Can I cut a couple guys that were bad? Can I make a couple of trades, even force a trade? Again, it's my world. I can do what I want. So I thought about doing that. I've done that in OOTP and it's easy. And depending on, you know, you give yourself three or four years to, to get there. And I usually just kind of quick sim day by day and do the GM thing. And if you watch, but again, I think you'd have for baseball. You gotta know the sport. You gotta know what you're looking for, and so hopefully you'll find that the new FHM is a little more easier explaining on, on things, and it, so you know when someone's yeah. being dumped and what not to take the salary. But at the end of the and, season, though, because we're playing, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. You know, when you go to draft somebody or, you know, whatever, I mean, you know how good they're going to be. So you have this yeah, advantage. Especially if you're using real players, yeah. Yeah, so if you're using the real players, you could say, okay, well, you know, I'm going to pick up this guy as a rookie because he's going to be a fantastic player. But right now he's a rookie and nobody knows that except me. So it'd be kind of fun to do something like that. So I just know if you've ever if you've ever tried to I've do I've done that. that with OTP, and when you have to juggle payroll or when well, you know you're close – to getting in and you know that that one missing piece and in baseball of course if you draft a player it's going to be four or five years before they come up but you covet the player i won't force the trade to do it um but i kind of value if if the computer wants to dump me a prospect I'll, i'll go for prospects and try to trade off money and again Sometimes it's called cheating, and sometimes it's called hard bargaining. Mm. And, uh, boy, it's fun when you know you got to put together. The thing is, though, when you put together a really young team, they want money. Mm. Yeah. (laughs) I I, I love forcing the trades because the first thing I ever did with – I think it was uh, Action PC Hockey is I put Gump Worsley on the Bruins. I was like, nope, Gump's coming to the Bruins. I forget what year I was doing, but he's he's coming to me because I'm playing. Gump Worsley's going to be on my team, damn it, you know. And uh, I think it was is either Action PC or Strat, one of the two. But I was like, nope, he's coming on the team. Thank you very much. You know, had some fun with that. But anyway, should we get into uh, the topic of the day? Sure. All right, here we go. All right, so this is something you brought up to me today, 
mm-hmm. right before the show, and when you were talking about you were playing a new game and you were having I don't want to say a hard time, but but the directions were stumping oh, you, and goodness. you were you were yeah. reading them, and it's like boy, it's, some makes sense, some doesn't, and then you said, boy, somebody laid out you know line by line how to play this game in more or less layman's terms or regular dude terms. And you're like, wow, that was fantastic. So explain yeah. that story. Cause that's what we're talking about here is making it make sense because there's so many games that we played and, and sometimes you just read something in the instructions and I'm, I'm guilty of overthinking. So when I read something, I way overthink it and that's my problem. And a lot of times we've sat down and you said, no, Dave, you're overthinking this just, back it up and this is what it means and it's it's more simple than I make it but but you've also said I can see how you would think this right, way so right. sometimes a second set of eyes on something uh, would, would make sense and, and again we talked about developers it's it's hard to develop a game and write instructions for it for somebody that knows nothing about the game yeah because it's your own baby yeah you it, exactly. it's because you know the ins and outs of it so you might not break it down to the to the the basic level because because you know it so well you kind of assume everybody kind of knows the basic level as well so I can see how difficult that would be but but tell you a story about this all right I picked up after reading um, the game developers diary on Delphi I picked up classic F1 now we talked a little bit last week about finding a simulation for for Auto racing. I mean, Roberto Chavini's games are great. I'm not saying that they're not, but, um, and what I really, motorsport manager doesn't quite cut the mustard either. And so I've been reading that and figuring, okay, I might be able to, from reading his stuff, play it. It's a pure card and dice, it's a PDF. And so when you buy the PDF from ASG Games, it's 166 pages. Oh, wow. And with, you get um, an enormous amount of directions. Uh, 53 driver cards, by the way. It comes with the 2019 season and all 33 championship Formula One drivers. Is is, and, uh, Sh- is Schumacher in there? Yes, he is. He's the only, he's the only guy I know because uh, he used to play soccer, too, because he was a goalie. It was a Schumacher for the, the German yes. goalie. And he also rides, drives cars. He probably plays tennis, too, because this is a Schumacher. Uh, I love Schumacher. Uh, the goalie is Danish, but, yes, the rest of it's German. I love Danish. Um and his son now plays too, which tells you how old I am. Um, uh, and and all nineteen or twenty tracks from the twenty nineteen season. So it's a massive, massive package. And the cool thing about it, what he's done, Anthony's done different than most other game designers, is you don't get. I mean, everyone has it. All the drivers have a card, but. You roll two 10 sided die and you can roll for whatever card they drove in a particular year. So if someone had drove for 12 years, it's all divided for you. And so instead of saying, you know, you got Dave Gardner's best car, you could roll for Dave Gardner his first year when he's driving the uh, the uh, the Chevy Malibu. The Aunt Becky Chevy Malibu in a Formula <laughs> One race, or when Dave is pushing 50 at the end of his career and when he's driving the Uncle Jesse, it's time to retire car. The Queen, the oh. Queen family truckster. Yep. Um, the Ford Fairlane station wagon. Yeah. That's neat though. Um, so, so it, it, you can, it, it, it does really different cars. It, it, so, if, so you have, and then different car cars the, have different um, qualities. Yes. Absolutely. Oh, and that's, and that's oh. part of the reason why it's so complex. So even if you, so it's not just 33 cars at these 19, 33 drivers at these 19 tracks or the 20 drivers at these 19 tracks. It's you, it's all random. And so part of the problem was it's very hard to set up because one day you might have Dave Gardner's championship car the Dodge Charger that you had. Oh, and the next week you, you might get the, the, the junk one. And so you don't take one car over the course of the season unless you want to do a season. That is play. really cool for a racing it game really is that just, that you need to roll the dice to figure out what car you're driving. Yeah, and because the, you go to the championship, di- championship driver set and so you're driving from people from 1950 forward. You you get all sorts of styles of cars that are equal, some with wings, some with not. And so it really just kind of, it's talk about the ultimate immersion. 
And that's where it started to get complex because, okay, I've got my car from 1986. And so I have to, there's a lot of different ratings you kind of have to put together. And instead of putting a, a sample card up and, and saying, this is what you should be looking at, he tried his best to describe it. And I think the first time I tried it, I had about 65% of what he was trying to go. And again, I was being patient with it, wasn't frustrated, but just, oh my God, there is a lot to this. It is a uh, uh, tracks are variable and this and the qualifying. It, it, it's, it's, it's complex. And so yesterday, I'm back on the Delphi boards, and for whatever reason, I so, – oh, we talked a bit – I did a video on it, gave initial impressions, and somebody got a hold of me on Facebook. So you might want to look here. And so I looked – it was to the uh, auto racing game board on Delphi. And what I read was, okay, I can understand a little bit more to this, but as I was poking around yesterday on Delphi, that was the first board I read. So, okay, let me just read some races see what I'm missing here. And at some point in there, and I really didn't realize I'd be doing this for a topic today, somebody, and I wish I could give credit for it, sat there and broke down the setup, the qualifying, which I got to do next, and how to do the race results all on different spreadsheets or pieces of paper, and broke it down step by step by step and what page to look at in the instructions. Oh, wow. And, that detailed, oh, huh? Oh, oh, yeah. And so I got the setup part done last night for a race. It should take a, it took me about an hour, hour and a half to do it, but you got a roll for each individual car for the 20 drivers. There's ratings on each thing and there's some, there's some addition and some basic division and you find to get it all together because you are going from all different eras of auto racing. You're going from Jackie Stewart. You remember him when he did the Indy five, Jim, the car is not doing too great. Jim, you know, on, on, for that. So, you know, he's in there. And so you got modern drivers and that. And so it really is just the immersions there and all the tracks. And so figuring that, that made it easier. And so when I go to do the qualifying for this, it shouldn't be too difficult. I think I got that part figured out. And then running through the first race part will be interesting. But once you get one done, but there, but yes, the long story being short, somebody sat down there and just step by step, set up your spreadsheet with these columns. This is what you put in those columns. Read page 13 of the directions and explain why you need to do this. And Yeah, and when somebody oh. does that, then you go back to the instructions and you say, oh, okay, now I see where they're going here. Whereas without that, you might not be going in that direction of thought. You know, you're not, you know I mean, the part of is that I was tripped up with, if you saw the, the video on my YouTube channel, was I couldn't figure out what they were doing to set up a base rating because you have to compare a base rating with a qualif or the poll rating to get a qualify rating. And I wasn't sure it wasn't real clear to me what I should be getting to get a base rating. And just in that part of setting up the spreadsheet with the dice rolls and all that, I got it. And so that part made sense. And so you knew who would qualify well. And again, in this particular game, there are a lot of moving parts, which I think will make it, once I figure this out, eminently replayable. Because you're never going to get the same driver with the same car on the same track conditions. It's one of those things that we all take. So for there's so many variables. There's so many <laughs> variables, and boy, God, Richard, if you're listening to this, Mr. Hannah, would you talk to him about doing a PC version? Because he said Richard looked at it and went, "Okay." Um, yeah, right after you do the hockey game, Richard. Right after, right after you do replay hockey, um, but just so many different different variables and when you yourself are the computer and not having the, the keyboard in front of you you got to figure it out again it wasn't to the point where i got frustrated and said i'm done with this but just having that spelled out to solve that part so the next thing i get stuck on i can go through and 
Mm. It's just the whole two parts of this. Again, it's a card, pure card and dice thing, but I can train. I can transfer most of that information onto a spreadsheet. And once it's all figured out, I can play the game. And it looks like once you get to the actual race part of the game, that qualifying is a huge part of Formula One. Where you, the closer you get to the pole, the better your chances of winning. It's not like NASCAR where they're all bunched together. Mm. But yeah, um, no, I, but yeah, when someone takes the time and, and I, clarifies I everything, put it on my channel because, oh my God, I just made it so. The light just went on last night. Yeah, and it does. And sometimes, sometimes you need that. Sometimes you need that. I hate to say independent party, but someone not associated with the game that maybe has played the game that that knows about the game well, that has other, figured other it out. Thing is that you don't want to sit there and ask the same. You know, if the guy's gotten the same seventeen questions about what do I put in this box, yeah, and you've answered it, and you don't want to be the guy that gets yelled at. <clears throat> mm. But but when someone sense. lays that out, and again, that, that's something that that I did with Apple Hockey because again, the Apple Hockey rule book is so confusing. But I, I, I mucked through that. I must have read it 30 times. <laughs> and and I, I finally ironed it out. But and wasn't I, it Tebow's, Tebow's video that helped you Tebow with sparked it. Tebow's video for Apple Hockey sparked it for me because he clarified a couple of things. And that, that, that pushed me over the hump because I was like, man, I'm stuck here. But his videos pushed me over the hump. And so once I got going, I, I just, I you know, I put the pedal to the metal with that game. And I started ironing it out. And, there's a, and so basically anything that tripped me up, I did a complete video on about here's what I do. Here's all the problems I had with the instructions. Here's how I solve them, right or wrong. Here's what I did. Mm -hmm. And so I kind of did my own video rule book for Apple and to help people play the because it's a good game. And the rule book contradicts itself and there's some mistakes in it and it, it's confusing and why they laid things out in certain ways, I don't know. But I, I just spelled it all out. And, and I then I gotta still get compliments on that video for thanks for pointing out some of these things that didn't make sense. But sometimes it takes somebody who really likes the game, that has figured it out, that has mucked their way through the instructions, that kind of gets it, to, to write it differently or to say it differently. And sometimes that's all it takes is somebody to say, hey, look, here's, here's what I do. Excuse me. Or here's here's kind of what you need to do, and that just clarifies everything. Then when you go back to the instructions, you're like, okay, now I get what this means, and now now that I've seen it in action, and now that somebody's played it or explained it or laid it out a little differently, now it makes more sense. Or you know, hey, start off with put a column for this and put a column for that. It's like, oh, that makes a lot of sense because when yes. I do it that way, now things. Uh, you know, it's the the picture becoming clearer, the fog's clearing up, so to speak. So yeah, and and again, whether it's videos or whether it's people just writing out the instructions, or maybe you know putting up uh, their own score sheet or spreadsheet or something. Sometimes even that helps when someone, you know, says, "Hey, look, I made a new score sheet for this game that really makes it easier to play because everything is there." You know, the uh, the the ID Jester Apple Hockey score sheet that he designed is brilliant. And that, that's something that it started with someone else's spreadsheet. I added to it and then ID added to it. And, and however we come out with this thing, it, it, it's fantastic. It, it really helps you play Apple hockey, how it's laid out. It really does. Mm -hmm. So sometimes even just a score sheet or a spreadsheet can, can help you out as well. Yes. You know, uh, and I, I think, um, it was it re, re, um, regular season basketball had a spreadsheet and and I and I did a little bit of work on that, and people. I, I said electronic that, spreadsheet that I used the the couple times I played it, and it's made it all the more. Yeah, easy. when you, yeah, because you can put in the the score for the quarter, and then it, it adds it all up for you. You know, it's done automatically in, in Excel, and so that's something that somebody started. I added to it, you know, a little bit, and now it's uh, that's it makes that game fun to play and easier to play. So yeah, so any any kind of help you can give the community or give back to a game. Because, because again, sometimes it takes a, a different set of eyes to see something a certain way, and then they can explain it to people from kind of just a player's point of view rather than the creator's point of view. Yeah, and the they're vastly thing, different. The other thing is because you know, Formula One, especially in this country, is a niche sport. A million people might watch a race, which is actually pretty good. Um, 
you have an interest in it, you may have known of it, Schumacher, as you know, the driver or Hamilton or, or Jackie Stewart, even Mario Andretti won a world driving championship in the late seventies, you know, something might've struck you and it's, it's, and I mean, Anthony's the one that did time travel tennis. So, you know, his work, he also did the classic soccer, which I've shown a couple of times mm-hmm. on my channel. So, you know, that it's a good design of a game. He's really good at what he does. And so it gives, it gave, gives me the extra incentive to try to figure this out because I like his other game designs. If it was a new, someone I didn't know and you pick it up and you spend the money and go, I can't make heads or tails out of this. It's going to get put in the, on the hard drive and I'll transfer it four or five times over the next 10 years and that. But knowing that I enjoy immensely his other two games, it's like, no, I want to figure this out. Is it going to be a regular, but no, but maybe five or six times a year or who knows once you get everything figured out. And if it goes smoothly, couple hours in the winter time your game check your game time changes when you can't go outside mm-hmm. you know i might roll something over the course of the winter mm. um yeah and so to have again a tutorial I, I looked on youtube to see if there was any tutorials there because we're kind of conditioned for that you've yeah. done teaching games i've done teaching games um and there hadn't been, and I think for me, that was kind of the incentive. Okay, let's pick this up and see what we mm. can do with it. Because, I, look, well, we you, be- you might be the guy now to take what this other person did to make it make sense. Yes. And now you can put that to video now for this game. Right. And I think for a lot of people, it's easier to sit there and watch and freeze freeze the video. And just again, when even not being able to figure out how exactly you get the base for that, just the whole thought of, in this case, oh, you're not stuck with his best car, although if that's what you want to do, hey, it's your game. There's no wrong way to play. But it's like, oh, wow. So it would be just like if you took a golfer. Now, do you want Tiger Woods injury years or do you want 2000 tiger when he won 18,000 or I mean, that would be a great thing to do with a golf game or a baseball game. All right. You got Wayne Gretzky. What year Wayne Gretzky are you going to mm. get? You're going to get the Gretzky with Edmonton, 85, 90 goal seasons. You get Gretzky with the Rangers when he's still at 90 assists, but 20 goals, 25, you know, that I just thought was so Yeah, fast. That is neat. Which, but, but what I do to like too is, is yeah. there's been times that I've actually asked, the game creator questions and they still couldn't answer my question. Either they didn't understand it or they didn't understand where I was coming from. So they would give me an answer and I'd be like, it really doesn't answer my question, but it's stuck and you can't really explain how you get stuck. Yeah. They've done it to the point where, well, yeah, it's, it's X. Well, yeah, no, I, I, yeah, yeah, I still don't know how to get to X. And so somebody that's just a player of the game who stumbled through that same process will come up and say, okay, I've been where you are. Here's how you get past B and C to get to X. And you're like, okay, perfect. Now all the dots are connected. But yeah, sometimes it takes someone who plays the game, who's, who's fought through the things that you fought through to lay it out because there's that. You know, when anytime you learn a new game, and that's kind of what we're talking about here, right? You you have that aha moment, and everyone has the aha moment. And if you don't have the aha moment, then you're probably not playing the game. Then it's like, yep, okay. <laughs> but, oh, look what I found. I remember buying this. And the other thing <laughs> is, I mean, if, if it's a sport that you aren't intimately familiar with, it's going to be harder for you to get tripped up on a hockey game than it is anything else because you know the sport inside and out. And for me, a racing game, I don't know all the ins and outs. I, you know, I'm kind of always struck by the history of the sport and, and all that. But, you know, I, I'm not the, the nuances, I suppose, is the word I'm looking for. But that, that's, I think, where you get caught up. And if you design a game, of course, you figured all the stuff out. Mm. And it's like, uh, no, I don't want it to get put away. Um, yeah. No, I hear that. I mean, we, I was talking to somebody on the on the, the dice line here, and we were going back and forth about games, and uh, they said they picked up uh, Inside the Crease, and they really liked it, and they were thinking about picking up the, the basketball game Inside the Paint. And I says, I probably would like the basketball game because it plays very similar to hockey, but I 
tried, I don't know if I tried the demo or I watched some videos on it. I just don't know enough about basketball to play it because there's a lot of basketball things that go on in that game that you manually have to figure out and manually have to know that I don't, that I just don't know with the hockey. I know exactly all the positions and all the terms and the, the, you know, everything goes on in the game with, you know, rebounds and deflections and, you know, wide jo- I, So I know all that, but in basketball, there's so much going on between the fouls and stuff that I don't know where to click. Cause I just don't know the game well enough, not a game issue. It's a Dave issue. Um, right. But again, when you get back to, you know, if you know a game well, that, that does help too. But yeah, when you have that aha moment and it all makes sense and, and then you can share that with people that's great because that means you figured it out i've solved the puzzle you know and now let me share some of the the puzzle sharing with you you know so here's here's what i found out and boy that that so helps learn a game is is when someone can make it make sense for you and you can read those instructions a hundred times and play it a hundred times but but there's something that's just not clicking. And when someone can say it in the right way, and that's the key, and that's why I talk about all the time about feel free to make a video or post something on Delphi or Facebook about a game, even if there's a hundred of them. Do your own. You know, and, uh, yeah, because you're going to get something that someone else yeah, is in, in fact, it was a, there was a replay game. I keep bringing him up. He's a new channel on YouTube, uh, a great guy. He's always in our in our um, chat rooms, and he's doing his own channel, the replay game on, on YouTube. And he brought that up, and he, and he quoted me. He says, Dave always says that you can't have enough videos on a game. So he says, I'm going to do a video on a game or an unboxing or whatever. And I say that because, you know, if, if there's a two or three videos out there, well, I don't want to make another one, but you might say something in a certain way that's going to affect somebody differently. We all look at games. Di- we all look at what it, we, it's how we, it's how we approach it. Maybe it's, you know, what we see from our own eyes. Again, a different set of eyes sees things differently. So you might say something in your video that nobody else did. And it doesn't mean anybody's wrong. It's just, you saw something that no one else picked up on. Or maybe you explained it in such a way that someone who didn't understand it yet We'll get there. So, and, and, you know, let's be honest, you know, when you go to YouTube, do you just watch one video or do you watch as many as you can to, to kind of absorb all the different points of view on a game? And that really helps spell it out because everyone has their little way of explaining it. And Mm -hmm. you pick up these little breadcrumbs along the way and eventually you have enough breadcrumbs to make a sandwich. It's kind of. You know, the way the way oh, I look at it. Exactly. No, that's a very good way to put that. And so, yeah, so I always say if you want to make a video on a game or, or comment on a game or, or, or whatever it is you want to do on, on any kind of social media or Delphi to, to help people with the game, do it. Even if it's been done a hundred times because it's going to be someone that, that sees your stuff and it's going to be like, oh, th- that's the one piece I was missing. Or, or I had a hard time with that. And, wow, you brought this up and made a point about that. Or maybe I'm playing something wrong and, and you explained it. And like, wow, I think I've been playing that wrong. So, yeah, feel free to do that. And and so it's really great when I see people doing that. And when you told me that story about the, the guy explaining the F1 and, and the, the oh, spreadsheet, it's, set, it's like oh. it, now, now, now you can play the game because now you're not fighting the setup and you're not wrestling with it. And sometimes if you wrestle hard enough with the instructions of a game, it, it tires you out mentally. And it yes. fatigues oh, you. You get fatigue on that game. And we talked about uh, on the show, we've done um, uh, discussions on first impressions. And if your first impression is, man, I've been at this a, a day or two, and I am just completely confused, and I can't figure this out, I'm going to go play a game that I'm not confused on. I want to enjoy some game time. But this one right here, this puzzle is stumping me. And I'm and now it gets to a point fr- that I'm frustrated. And now I'm frustrated with the game. So my first impressions are it's a frustrating game. But when you when someone shines that flashlight in and says, "Look, let me let me flash a light on the puzzle here," oh wow, now I see what's supposed to be done. Yeah, no, a- a- abs- absolutely. And again, it's not a game that's about to be converted into. I'm not just going to wait for the PC version to come out. You, you got to figure this out. And yeah, I mean, there's other games too. Um, the other thing is that. For game designers, I, I know I, I did this for Glory Days Boxing. Um, he handed me the directions and said, proofread them. And I did. 
And you, those there are things that you can get with someone. You got to trust the person that's proofreading it, obviously. But when you hand that to someone else and go, you know what? It's not just putting the comma here. What the hell are you trying to say with this? What's this mm-hmm. rating for? And again, going back to what you said, it's your game. You know how yeah. it works. You know yeah. how you know how to create. You know how the ratings came from. Blah 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 blah. And so it makes it harder to. If I was to sit there and try to explain how to play action PC baseball, for instance, after doing 400 streams, literally 400 streams on on the stuff, it would be very hard for me to sit there and go back and say, this is how you play. Yeah, because you tend to skip over the simple stuff because you've done it so many times that you think everybody knows it. And so, yeah. Absolutely. And I I did that too with the game. There There was someone who sent me game instructions and uh, and I sat down with him, and I went over all the instructions. And I said, "Look, I says I think you really need to clarify this, because as a player, I'm taking this two different ways. So let's clarify this. Right. And then th- this is this doesn't really make much sense. How about we call it this? And we went back and forth several times. And I would say ninety percent of what I sent this this developer they used in the game. And I think when we were done going, and there were some things that he he. It was insistent on keeping because of something of us. Okay, that's fine, but let's. But you can't say it that way because it's confusing, you know. So let's say it this way. And when we were done, I think we had pretty much a cut. Like there was no mistake. At, like what when the instructions, what was happening with what player or what, and um, and that was key. Is that that he bounced that off of me, and I and I'm an avid player of this game, and I says, here's what I would do here, and this this explains this, and this explains that, and let, let's get this really really down to the nitty gritty. So there's no. No assumptions to be made. There's no guessing. It's as we're gonna know what's going on here, mm-hmm. and I think we come up with something really good. And, um, and in fact, there was someone that uh, that just sent me one of their football games. <laughs> I finally got to. I just been real busy with the play by play on the hockey TV. So I finally sat down and played his game, and and I had some issues with the game, with, with how it was set up. And I and I was just honest with them. And I said honestly, there is way too much setup in the beginning of this game, and I'm kind of turned off by it. And I said, it's not something I would want to play. If this, if it was very daunting how much extra work needed to be done. And I said, there's got to be a better way of handling, you know, taking the original um, numbers and modifying them with the other team, as you do when you play different games. you got the offense and the defense. you got to combine them to get oh, a final yes. rating. So I said, there's got to be a better way of getting the final rating than how you laid it out because I don't want to rewrite. All these ratings every time I start a game to me that's a, that's a little too much work for me, and uh, he get back to me and, and he said I appreciate the feedback and maybe it's something we can work on or maybe I got to explain it better and and so hopefully that, that that'll get ironed out. Um, but again, it's one of those things where um, you know it's different set of eyes sees it differently and as a player i said as a player here's where i'm coming from as a player now as a developer he might have not seen it that way because he's been working on this for a while and it's just come it's old hat for him we we also know from talking with ian and and joe from payoff pitch and some other things that you know it takes years sometimes for something to go forward enough to even get to the point where it's developed enough for someone to try Mm -hmm. And so you, when you get close, just like with anything that you create, you, you know, you eat and sleep and, and, and go to the bathroom with, with your designs in your head. And so, yeah. And I think it's also tougher for independent developers to try to get products out there and people to understand, because if you see the name Strat or APA or Inside Sports to a degree or, or OOTP, you know what you're going to get. You know the style you're going to get. You kind of know the rule sets you're going to get. You know how the game kind of plays before you start it. And so if you're doing something new and you're fighting for something, space on someone's tabletop or on their computer or gaming time, yeah, that second set of eyes. You just, I'm intrigued enough that I'll give you the money to try this. But again, it's the whole thing with retail. Any idiot could have come into my store. It's my job to make you come back. Hmm. And so, yes, just having that there. Look, I don't want to rewrite your baby. I want to make what you have poured your heart and soul in easy enough to understand so that other people can enjoy it. Yeah, I want to make it so the average game player can understand your game and play it and have fun. 
right. is what we're trying to do. Yeah, well, not right. we, but you know what I'm saying. Yeah, no, but yeah, exactly, exactly. Is, is some someone just kind of maybe filtering it out, you know, or saying, "Hey, here's what I do with this," or sometimes just spell it out a little bit more basic terms. So, but it sounds like that's what ha- you had happened with that that racing game uh, and. I'm- I Brilliant! Wish I I could think of the get, name of the guy who. who well, we'll, we'll get it, it for next week. Up. We'll get it for next uh, week's I'll show. When I do the next video on the in that classic F one series, I'll I'll talk about that and get his name out there then. But yeah, we'll talk about it next week on the show. Speaking of which, how do you get a hold of us? All right, let's fade this out, shall we? All right, by the numbers, this was episode one ten. The cardstock episode. The cardstock episode. <laughs> uh, thanks for uh, tuning in here. We're a little bit late getting this, this episode out, but um, here it is. DigitalToDice.com is how you get a hold of us. 978-751-DICE is the Dice Line. Send us a text. DigitalToDice at Yahoo.com is the email. And over on Facebook, Facebook.com slash group slash digital to dice. And I got one quick story as we fade out here, Ron. Okay. I did a junior hockey game the other day. And what I, the first thing I do when I get to the rink is I get the rosters and I go up to the away team and I said, give me pronunciations of all your guys because I'm doing the broadcasting. And there was a goaltender in net for this one team up here. And his last name was Kunta, K-U-N-T-A-R, Kunta. And it was Cameron Kunta, who's a goalie. And I asked the coach, I says, by chance, is he related to Les Kunta? And he says, yep, that's his dad. That's so cool. Les Kuntar was the starting goalie for the expansion Worcester Rice Cats in the American Hockey League in 1994-95. There was him, it was Les Kuntar and Wayne Cowley, I think, were the two goalies that played most of the season. And and when we got jerseys, I, I had Kunta put on the back of my Ice Cats jersey. And it's still hanging in my room right now, the, the, the Ice Cats jersey. So I thought it was really cool that uh, Les Kunta's son was in a game that I was broadcasting. And I told the coach, make sure you tell uh, Cameron that I'm a big fat fan of his dad who played net for Worcester. And I thought it was a, cool. it was a feel-good That's moment. Cool. And, I, and I, te- I took a shot of the roster sheet and I texted some of my old buddies uh, who went to the Worcester Ice Cats games with me. And I said, do you remember this name? And they're like, we asked. Absolutely remember Les Kunta from the, the original season. So it was nice. a feel good moment for me. And I gave his That's dad awesome. gave his dad a shout out on the broadcast. Said Les, if you're watching your son in this game, it says I still got your jersey hanging in my room. So it was a fun fun moment for me at the rink. So so we'll end the show on that. Thanks for tuning in. This is the Digital Today's Podcast, episode 110. We recorded this on uh, October 27th of 2021. And thanks everybody for joining us. And Ron, thanks for joining me today. As always, talk to everybody later. Bye-bye.